Hey everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to show you how I've made this card style here. I'm still not 100% sure what to call it. It's like a winged box card kind of style or winged bendy card. I've done bendy cards before and I've already got them on the channel or dome cards and I'll, I'll link a playlist up here. I recently saw a really nice post by Jennifer Maguire and it was basically asking us as card makers to create cards with the blue and yellow colours of the Ukrainian flag. The sunflower is their national flower. You don't have to use sunflowers, but if you were going to make a blue and yellow card, share it on your social channels with the hashtag cards for the ukraine or cards for ukraine and i just thought it was it was just such a lovely thing it's a small gesture it's just something to just flood social media with all the colors you know just showing them that we are here standing with them we're supporting them and thinking of them during this really terrible time right now so this was the card that I made during a Facebook Live. So many of you have already been making cards. You've been sharing them on my group and across, like I said, all social platforms. Just share that hashtag. So if you want to type in that hashtag, you'll see so many beautiful cards, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever you're on, you can share them. This one is going in my window. It has already been displayed in my window. And um, I just think it's a really nice thing to do. So obviously you don't have to do it like this at all. And the one that I'm making today is actually going to be a Mother's Day card. But this one here, you've got your sentiment suspended kind of on the top of this piece here. And then I've got the piece there on that middle one, mats and layers. You've got space on the back to write your message, but I've left that blank because I'm not going to be, you know, writing anything on the back. Like I said, this one is being displayed and will stay in my craft room. Very straightforward to make. It all folds flat and that will fit into a six by eight envelope. But you can easily reduce the size or make this bigger. And I am going to be sharing other sizes and another style very soon on the channel. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make a Mother's Day version. So I've used this embossing folder for those back pieces and that's a Gemini one. This one is called the Basket Weave, but this is quite old and I'm sure when I used it in a few other tutorials I was unable to find a link, but any you know nice background embossing folders will work. And then I've already cut my edges here and I'm going to do some stenciling just to show you there how to get that bit of detail but you've got these two in the six by six sex obviously this is a six inch tall card but if you do want to make it taller because it's easy to adapt and you've got these edge dies then they're going to work but any edge dies as well will look lovely on this and as i showed you there with that one at the beginning it's um, lovely without them as well so we'll talk about that in a bit and then that's the acetate and then we'll go through all of that later so to make the back of the card you're going to want to cut yourself a piece of eight by six along the eight inch side you're going to score at one four and seven okay now you might want to flip it and just score the four again in the opposite direction because you're going to fold it so you've got these as mountains the middle of valley and then the end as a mountain so you've got that winged effect like so okay then I've got this here. Now, this is my acetate piece, but it's hard for you to see. So pretend this is the acetate. So this can be any height that you want. So, you know, if you want to do just this thin strip like I did here, this is one and a half high by the seven. Once, so if you want to have a thicker panel through the middle there, maybe stamp a sentiment and build up more of a scene. It's entirely up to you. But because I want to have this as a full piece of acetate, then this piece is seven by six. Along the seven inch side, you're going to score at half and six and a half. You're then going to fold these in. I'll show you it all on this card and then I'll do it on the acetate. And then you're going to run tape down these sides here because they're going to stick inside. So you can see here, this is tucked underneath these panels here. To help you get that curved effect, you might just want to pop a bit of shape into it and that will just give it that kind of bounce. So it will still fold flat, but it will just want to naturally. So if I just laid that down now as if it was flat in the envelope, it's going to just naturally want to pop up. And that's what we've got there. It's got that natural kind of curve to it. So any stamping you want to do now, whatever you want on that. I mean, it could be the full piece in cardstock. So if I just pretend to sit that over there, so you could just have that as now another nice piece of decorative paper over the front, stamp a sentiment, and then you'll have, you know, that looking card there. But this is going to be swapped out for acetate. So I've got my piece here. So I'm just going to fold the edges and I'm going to run my red tape down each side. Okay. 
Okay, so you see now how that looks and that will eventually go in the sides like this. You can see we've got that nice clear dome shape. Then if you want to do like I have here, so that was one and a half by seven, just scored how I showed you. If you want to then have your sentiment at the top here, you'll see this little arch one. So it's just a smaller version of this here. This one is a piece of one by three. You just want to score at half an inch at each end. So half an inch and two and a half. And then you're just going to do the same thing and just fold that under and then just pop a little curve through the middle there. Add your glue to each side. And then when I stick the size I'm going to use in a minute, you would just position it obviously up higher. And then the sentiment is just stuck on the brow of that curve. So on the very, very top, just popped a little bit of hot glue and then I stuck my sentiment on top. But it means it all folds flat. And then it naturally just pops up when you, you know, bring the card out there. I want to make this one a bit bigger because it's going to have all the flowers built up. So this is a piece of four by one and a half. And again, half an inch at each end. So half an inch and then three and a half. Fold in the sides. And just add that curve like so. And then this one's going to be right in the middle. And you stick it down flat. And again, that's then going to come up as the card comes up and I'm going to build that flower arrangement off of just this kind of middle bit. So I'm going to stick the initial flowers down with hot glue when I do that bit and then the rest I'll just stick with tacky glue. So it's up to you. I mean, you could have two. You might want to do one like that with the sentiment and then have a smaller arrangement. But again, I think the width that I gave you is a nice size, but the height, if you want to make that a thinner band, just do it half an inch or even one or even a big thicker one you know, and have more pattern paper, you can really change this up. So these pieces here, you want two that are two and three quarters by six. I've done the full height because they need to hide the join of the acetate here. So I'm going to take the backing off of one side first. And the folded side is going to run flush with this score line here. So I'm just going to put that right at the top and then just make sure that is nice and straight and then just burnish that well like so and then that's going to come across now if you just fold it flat with that folded under then it will fit exactly where you need it to go it'll be lined up with that fold there so again just going to take off the backing so it's folded under and then if I just roll along there and then just kind of tuck that under like so. I want to just shift that a little bit, but that's all going to get hidden. So you can see it's nice and flat. If I hold it that way, you can see it better. But it's got that, because it's folded, it's already created its own kind of curve. And you can see it just stands really well. So now I'm going to do my stamping and the heat embossing because I'm using a heat resist acetate, which is what this is here. It will all be linked in the description box below. But I found you still get a very slight amount of warping. So I wanted to get it stuck down first and then I can see where the warping goes. If it turns out to not be great, I'm just going to peel this off and then we'll go to plan B, which will be a, a stuck on sentiment. <laughs> so, But I wanted to do it this way because I think it's just going to help keep its shape. So I'm going to take my stamping platform. Sit this one in here like so okay so we need to prep this first so I've got my anti-static buddy here so I just want to cover that all over the acetate so we only want the embossing powder to stick on the stamped image so just give that a really good cover and I always like to go over my fingers as well get rid of any oils or hand cream and stuff that you might have so that's now prepared 
So first of all, I've done a test run. So I just wanted to make sure I was happy with how it's going to look and also that it kind of popped against the flowers. So, I mean, if I just bunch those together there, you can see that font really nicely still with all of those behind. So this is two stamp sets. I didn't have anything like this. So I wanted to create my own. So I've taken the main verse here. This is from a card making magic set. This is an old one. Someone special, someone kind. You're the one that comes to mind just to say a big thank you for all the lovely things you do, which I think is perfect for Mother's Day. But there isn't no reference to mum or mother. So I found this stamp set here. This is from Making Cards magazine, July 2017, and it was family. But there's mother there if you would rather write mother. But I never say mother. I always say mum or mummy if we're being silly. So I've taken this one here. And I think that looks really nice. I just love the way it's come together. I think it looks quite um, like something you'd find on a shop brought card. So that's what we're going to go with. So I've got the two stamps here. What you'll find you'll have to do is probably stamp them both separately because this one's actually thicker than this one, I believe. So I don't want to obviously do them at the same time because one it won't stamp. So I'm going to sit my, in fact, I will do the mum first. Now, the good thing here is I've got my centre score line so I can make sure that this sits right across the middle there. So we're going to place mum right across the middle there and pick that one up. And then I've got my Versa mark here. You want to make sure it's a nice, you know, juicy pad, dry ones or ones that are nearly on their way out. You know, you're not going to get a good impression. You want to make sure that's really covered. And then sit that down. And the good thing with this is you can see it. Well, you guys probably can't there, but when that catches the light, I can see that's transferred really nicely. So get rid of that one. And now I can position... Make sure it's the right way up. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that one. Again, make sure that's all in place and then pick that one up. And then again, just catch the light and I can see that's caught nicely and I think it's straight. So I'm using the Wow Opaque Bright White Embossing Powder. And now I'm just going to Sprinkle that down and I'll be able to really see now if it is crooked. If it's too bad, then I'm going to have to start again and you just wipe it off. So actually, no, it's straight. Maybe a little bit to the left, <laughs> but it's a smidge. So we're going to be fine. But there is just a little bit there. Maybe my finger did go where it shouldn't have. So just use your brush and just get rid of any little specks. Because if you don't get rid of them now, then they will melt and stick and bond to the area so just spend a minute hopefully you can see this catching the light also to clean your acetate if you just spray some rubbing alcohol or surgical spirit with a bit of kitchen towel do that first make sure you've got no sticky marks on it this was a fresh one out of the pack so it's okay but i think that is good to go so i'm just going to use the lowest setting for this just let it warm up for a little bit so i'm going to keep it flat and then just circular motions and it will take pretty quickly. You'll be able to see because it will start going shiny. Just bending it around so I want to keep that as, you know, I don't want there to be any kind of warping really. So I think that's okay. Whilst it's still warm, I'm going to keep it in that position so it can cool again flat. Okay, so now fingers crossed i'm going to push that back because i've flattened the acetate so i want to get that bounce back into it oh it's worked <laughs> phew yeah so i would just kind of follow the way i did it just to make sure you don't get any warping like you'll you'll notice it yourself like there's a little dip where the thank is but otherwise you know you're not going to see that once it's all decorated but hopefully you can see that it looks really really nice okay so now i can stick these in and they're going to go right over the top of the acetate and hide all that tape. And you, you know, you'll start to really see that sentiment coming through. So that's all stuck down. And now that sentiment is starting to really pop. Then I want to stick this piece in. So I'm going to use the quick grab glue for this one, I think. Um, so you're just going to add your glue. And 
Okay, and then I'm just going to use my... Okay, so I'm just going to use my tweezers. Keep it in this shape. And then I just want this in the middle. It's all going to get covered, so I'm not too worried. But as long as you've got it kind of halfway over each side, you'll see how that now pops up and that's going to have the flowers on it. So they're going to look like a little floating you know, bouquet of flowers. So just make sure that that's all secure. And like I said, you might have it lower here and then, the, you know, another one at the top. There's quite a few fun ways to do more with this one. Okay, I'm going to add the side panels, I think once I've added all the flowers, because I really want to see how this is you know, going to look. So... I've got all these pieces here. So this is using my Funky Florals die set. So for this one here, for example, I've used two of the larger one. You could do them, you know, obviously all different sizes. So I've done a variety of those in the small as well. Then the large of these ones I've turned into daisies. I've got those ones. I've done the medium, which is here. I haven't done any small in that one. And then this one here, is using this one, two of them. I've inked the corners there. That was using the Spectrum Noir Fuchsia. Um, again, done all different sizes. And then the leaves. So I've just cut this one here in the dark green. And then this one here is using the lighter green. And then these I've used for the centres here in the yellow and the brown. You've got the two sizes there as well. You've got your stems. These look really nice. I always usually die cut this one in like a silver or a holographic cardstock and they're just nice little fillers. But it's a lovely little set and you can, you know, create these kind of flowers. So I think you kind of need to lay down a large one, but I'm going to probably have it a little bit higher there. Um, I want to lay the fuller ones down. So I might have those like that. Remember, you're only adding your glue on the brow of this piece. Once you've got these down, you'll build up then off of these. So you're only actually sticking a couple onto there. All the rest you're going to then, you know, um, stick elsewhere. So I'm using the hot glue because I just want this to really obviously stay in place. So I'm just going to hold that there for a moment. I might add centres to these ones. I'm not sure because they do get covered quite a lot. They are more of that background flower. And then this one here, I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue. So the more that that piece curves, the more they're going to, you know, kind of float. If you end up just covering that whole piece like here, it's not going to be able to pop because the flowers are going to catch. So you can see neither of these are catching on the sides. So just, you know, just test it each time you lift it up. So now I can place like that one, but I'm going to add some glue to those bits and stick it onto that pink flower. So it's not attached to that white strip at all. Um, and then, you know, add that one. And then the green leaves are going to be those fillers and they're going to go in all the gaps. And then I might attach, you know, this pink one will then kind of just be slightly tacked onto the bottom of that one and so on. So, you know, just play around, have some fun with it. If you wanted to, you could fold the acetate out so the tabs stick onto this piece. And then when we go to stick the side pieces on, they can cover it that way if you would rather be able to get to this better. Obviously, you see I'm popping my hands on underneath. But I just want to show as many ways during my videos because some people might ha not have anything to decorate the sides or they might just want to do it this way. Um, so, you know, there are other ways to make it easier for you. Like I said, stick those pieces that I stuck underneath there, stick them onto that and then cover it with your pattern paper and things like that. But I'm going to pop some music on now whilst I stick all these down.
Okay, so I think I've got enough in there. I might add a couple of these onto the back because I've got, yeah, just maybe a little cluster with those three. Let's see. So I'll keep those for the back. So you can see now how that all looks. The whole thing will go flat, fit into your six by eight envelope. But you've got that nice bounce there. Just, I think it's lovely. Definitely up there is one of my favorites that I've made. So then you can add the edges. So if you want to just have some decorative paper down the side here, then you'll want to cut yourself two pieces of three quarters of an inch by five and three quarters, okay? Or you can add your edge dies. So I've cut myself these ones here. Okay, so I've already stuck that one down. So you get the, the background die. So that one you just want to die cut twice, flip one of them over and then cut two of this one. So I've already got this one here because then I've used that same ink colour here, the fuchsia pink. And if you just pop your piece back into the die, we'll leave it in there if you just cut it. Because a lot of my dies have, have detail in the die and then you can use them as a stencil. So just pop that back in there. And then just with your ink, just go over the areas and then you can just run your dye under the tap. Just water, it's enough, and that just rinse right off. And then on that end, like so. And then when you take that away, just like a stencil, you will have that really pretty detail there. Okay, so just do that a couple of times. And then just I like to place the middle down first so you get that nice and centred and you get that border and then you can just push that one down into place and then that one just make sure you get that same white border like so and then I'm going to use my cloud glue and just run that down the side spread it out and then that just sits over the top. Just line up the corners here to the corner of the card. Okay, so they're now all stuck down. I think it looks so pretty, really lovely card. And then I've cut these pieces for the back. So I've got this one here to write my message. So the pink piece is two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then the white piece is two and a half by five and a half. So I've got one side to write my message. And this is the one where I think I'm just gonna have Actually, no, I'm going to leave that one blank and then I'm going to have the flowers on this side. So I think they pop nice against the, the plain pink. So just maybe a little grouping like that, just on that side. And they're going to go either side on the back there. And there's the finished card. I'm so pleased with this one. It's definitely made it into my top 10 favourite cards ever that I've made in terms of like floral ones. There's just something about this. It just looks so nice. And the whole thing obviously will go flat like this. Because I've added the edge dies, it is now longer than eight inches. So I'll just make a bespoke bouncy envelope for that one. I'll put my DIY envelope tutorial up here because you can make your envelopes any, any size. And then on the back, I've just embossed that piece and then added the flowers across the two there. So you've got all that space to write your message. And yeah, just, I just love it. And then this one as well, just as beautiful. Exactly the same. You just brought this right down to one and a half instead of the whole six inches tall. And then you've got that lovely sentiment that pops on there as well. But I'm going to do another version. Let's do a five by seven. Yeah, five by seven. But I'm going to layer up these pieces and do something creative that way. So you might see that come quite soon, actually, because I think I'll do them together because I think they're going to be hopefully popular one because I think a lot of you are going to really enjoy these styles. So if you do make any cards with the yellow and blue and the sunflowers, you know, anything you want, just check out the hashtag, hashtag cards for Ukraine. You'll see loads of beautiful cards, loads of inspiration. It's just so nice to have that kind of colour just flooding social media at the moment. And it's just a just a nice way for us to be able to show our support and that we are thinking of everybody affected at the moment. I will share, as always, all of the links to everything that I've used in the description box below. 
and I'll be back again very soon with more tutorials. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.